Hello everybody, today we're going to be looking at the 2024 NFL Draft class through a way too early NFL mock draft for the 2024 draft. I'm really excited to kind of introduce you to some of these players, talk about where they might go and where they might fit. Let's go ahead and dive right into it. This draft order was determined by PFF, so not necessarily based on what I think will happen in this upcoming season, but let's go ahead and start this draft with the first overall pick of the Cardinals on the board. I am going to go with Caleb Williams out of USC. If you don't know who Caleb Williams is, you absolutely will. He's getting lots of Patrick Mahomes comparisons. I don't think, obviously, it's fair to compare anybody to Patrick Mahomes as he is the greatest quarterback in the league right now, but Caleb Williams can do a lot of the off-platform stuff that Mahomes can do. He's got a lot of the natural talent, the big arm, the ability to kind of create something out of absolutely nothing. Williams also has that as well, and you know, barring something crazy and unforeseen, I do feel very confident that Williams will be the first pick in the draft. For the Cardinals, maybe it is time to move on from Kyler Murray. That contract is big. Murray has you know, not been healthy this past year or so. I do think that ultimately, if they are picking first, this is very likely to happen. At number two, the Arizona Cardinals back on the clock due to the Texans trading up with them for Will Anderson this year. In this case, I do think they will go with Marvin Harrison Jr., the wide receiver from Ohio State. Obviously, his dad, the Colts legend and Hall of Famer. So, you know, Marvin Harrison has good bloodlines, but he is not just good because of the name. He is six foot four. He's taller than his dad. He's still got the route running, the ability at the catch point. He's just insane. And I definitely think he is one of the best wide receivers we've seen since Jamar Chase. And, you know, he's very much on the same level, I think, of that kind of player. So Marvin Harrison, just a fantastic prospect. I think in a class with no dominant quarterback, he could go number one overall. That's not the case here, but he is just a fantastic player. For the Tampa Bay Buccaneers up next, third overall, I am going to have them going with Drake May. Drake May has gotten some Justin Herbert comparisons. He's got a big arm. He's got really the ability to make all of the throws in the world. I do think that he is, you know, a little bit inconsistent here and there at times, but he's got some good mobility. Not saying he's going to be Justin Herbert at all, but I do understand where that comparison comes from. And, you know, ultimately I wouldn't be surprised if he is a top three pick just because of those fantastic traits. For the Colts at number four, I am going to go with Alu Fashanu, the tackle from Penn State likely would have been the first tackle off the board this year, him or Paris Johnson. Fashanu just has great athletic ability. He's young, he's really talented, and you know, I definitely think that he could have come out and been a top 10 pick this year. So, you know, if he's even able to get better, that absolutely could be a top five pick. And Fashanu is somebody that, you know, is going to go very high. I think he's the favorite to be offensive tackle one, although there are some good offensive tackles in this class. But for the Colts, Fashanu makes a lot of sense. Just really kind of solidify that left tackle spot if Raymond is not able to really dominate there. For the Commanders, I am going to go with an edge rusher. That's going to be Dallas Turner out of Alabama. Turner had eight and a half sacks as a true freshman had just four last year but the talent is absolutely there I think with Will Anderson being there Turner hasn't received some of the attention that he perhaps deserves but he is a fantastic player and you know I definitely think for the commanders who might be losing both Chase Young and Sweat due to free agency this upcoming year edge rusher makes a lot of sense to attack that position and Dallas Turner might just be the best of the group for the Packers up next I don't necessarily think they will be picking this high but if they do I think Joe Alt makes a lot of sense out of Notre Dame you know used to play tight end really really good at the offensive tackle position he's athletic he's got the size and everything that you look for there for the Packers back to Yari really hasn't been able to stay healthy and you know there's still just that issue that continues to loom on the left tackle spot on the offensive line Alt could really solve that and be a great player for the Packers at number seven the Raiders on the clock I'm gonna have them going with Kool-Aid McKinstry the corner from Alabama you know one of the coolest names in the draft absolutely but you know he's also probably the best corner in the draft as well has all the traits you look for had a very productive season 15 passes defended and an interception in 2022 for the Raiders you know you have Nate Hobbs but you need some help at that outside corner position Kool-Aid McKinstry could absolutely provide that and I think that he would be a very good fit for what the Raiders need as the first cornerback off the board. For the Tennessee Titans up next, I'm going to have them going with Jared Verse. Verse was another player that a lot of people thought was going to declare for the draft this year in 2023. Ended up going back to school. 
You know, he was a transfer from Albany, decided to go to Florida State and was very productive in his first season, had nine sacks. A lot of people got around to watching his film and they had him listed as, you know, a top 10 to 15 pick. And I absolutely think he could be that kind of player again this year for Florida State. I really liked him and I definitely think for the Titans, they need to get stronger in the trenches. They have lost some of the edge rushers over the years, Bud Dupree and some of their other guys as well. So I think adding to that mix with a talented player like Jared Verse would make a lot of sense for them at number eight. For the Rams at number nine, a bit of an unconventional pick, but I'm going to go with Brock Bowers, the tight end out of Georgia. For Sean McVay, I think he would just love getting his hands on a true weapon like Brock Bowers. He's a little bit unique. He's the best tight end prospect since Kyle Pitts easily, but with Bowers, he's really dominant with the ball in his hands. He's a great yak weapon, had 942 yards, seven touchdowns uh, receiving, as well as having 109 yards rushing. They would run him on end arounds, get the ball in his hand, and just let him be a true playmaker. I do think he has some blocking ability as well, so really a complete tight end. He's just somebody that you want to get the ball in his hands, and he is a true weapon, and I think Sean McVay would just absolutely love a kind of player like that. So Brock Bowers at number nine overall would be a lot of fun. For the Bears at number 10, I am going to have them going with a someone that's not ranked super high within the PFF system. That's Michael Hart Jr., the defensive tackle from Ohio State. He was a bit of a rotational player for the Buckeyes this past year, but had four and a half sacks, was very disruptive in the passing game, and I think he's absolutely somebody that is going to have a really big year this upcoming year and really kind of you know solidify himself as one of the best pass-rushing three techs in this draft for the Bears. Ryan Poles has made it clear that he really, really wants to get that disruptive, penetrative, pass-rushing three technique, and I absolutely think that's what Michael Hall could be. I think they would value him very highly, and you know I could definitely see him being the pick for them at number 10 here. Additionally, for the Bears, they need help on that defensive front. Obviously, picking Hall, you already have Pickens, Gervon Dexter, who you drafted as well, but they need help at that edge rusher position. I think JT Tuimuloau from Ohio State as well, getting those two teammates there. Tuimuloau was a very highly regarded prospect. You know, he isn't very consistent at this point. He absolutely destroyed Penn State in their game, but just needs to be a bit more consistent on a game-to-game -game basis. I do expect his talent to really shine through this year on a very talented Ohio State defensive line and I think the Bears could pair those two teammates together and really really help that defensive line for them that needs to get a lot stronger. For the Patriots I'm going to have them going with JC Latham the tackle from Alabama. He plays right tackle for them. He's very well built. He's six foot six, 335 pounds. He's a very good pass protector, good mauler as well in the running game. I just think he's a complete right tackle and somebody the Patriots could absolutely use. The Patriots haven't really gotten consistent tackle play. You know, Isaiah Wynn, now gone, Trent Brown getting older as well. So Latham would really just kind of bring some new life into that position and you know, I think would be a really good player for them. For the Falcons, I do think that there is a good chance they do take a quarterback here. There's some interesting options. Michael Penix, Bo Nix, Quinn Ewers, J.J. McCarthy, maybe even Spencer Rattler. I think Ewers has a chance to really kind of climb up draft boards this year. He has a great surrounding core around him, some great receivers, good tight end as well. So I think with Ewers, he's going to have the talent around him to be really successful. He was also one of the most talented prospects ever. He was the number one overall prospect, one of the best recruits of all time, really. You know, originally went to Ohio State and transferred over to Texas, and I definitely think that he has all of the ability in the world to really be a great, great quarterback for Texas this year. For the Giants up next at number 14, I am going to have them going with a defensive lineman, Mason Smith. He's more of an interior player coming out of LSU. Missed the entire 2022 season with a knee injury, suffered in the first quarter of his first game. So very unfortunate there, but he was a five-star prospect with tons of upside Had a very good freshman season. You know, Leonard Williams is getting older. He's going to be on a contract year this year as well. So I do think Mason Smith is a very natural replacement for him and would make a lot of sense pair him with Dexter Lawrence, and that would be an awesome defensive front. For the Broncos as well, I think getting younger and more talented at that defensive interior position is important. Jazan Newton out of Illinois. Newton was a three-star prospect. You know, he's somebody that I really like. Five and a half sacks as an interior rusher would just kind of bring that infusion of young talent into that Broncos room, and I definitely think they could use somebody like him. He fits really perfectly in their system, and I, I overall think he would be a great player for them at number 15. For the Seahawks at number 16, I am going to go with Jeremiah Trotter Jr., the linebacker out of Clemson, his father, an Eagles Hall of Fame member, so the bloodline is absolutely there to be successful in the NFL. Trotter is just a very good, 
talented all-around linebacker. Six and a half sacks, five passes defended, two interceptions, five-star prospect, just all of the talent in the world in the middle of that defense. I think for the Seahawks, you know, Jordan Brooks hasn't really been able to stay healthy on a consistent basis. I think Trotter could be a great replacement or a great compliment to Brooks if they are able to retain him. And I think just overall, Jeremiah Trotter Jr. is it's tough to get linebackers in the first round, but he is deserving based on what we have seen so far from him. For the Steelers up next, I'm going to go with Braylon Trice, the edge rusher out of Washington. You know, I think he was very productive last year. Nine sacks in 2022. Really got off to a little bit of a slow start in his college career. Really didn't turn it on until this past year, but I think made a good decision going back to school. And I definitely think he can vault himself into the first round conversation. For the Steelers, I do think they always like investing in the trenches. You know, at that edge rusher position, you obviously have Watt. Highsmith, you might not be able to retain long term. Maybe he gets a deal as a number one edge rusher somewhere. So I think Trice could be just a great rotational, perhaps that number two edge rusher to bring in and be a really good player for the Steelers as well. For the Vikings, I am going to go with another Washington Husky, this time quarterback Michael Penix Jr. out of Washington. You know, he had a very, very good statistical year in 2022. 4,641 yards, 31 touchdowns to just eight interceptions. This was all after playing four years at the University of Indiana before transferring over to Washington. That does mean that he is going into his sixth season. He is already 23 years old, and that's absolutely going to be a topic for his draft profile in this draft class. But I think overall, he is a very good player if he puts together another strong season. He's got good arm, some really nice traits that you look for. And for the Vikings, you know, they need to draft the heir apparent for Kirk Cousins at some point. I think Penix makes a lot of sense to go ahead and, you know, take the swing on him there in the middle of this first round. For the Texans up next, I am going to go with a wide receiver to help out CJ Stroud. It's going to be Johnny Wilson though, out of Florida State. With Johnny Wilson, he is a bit of an incomplete player, but man, does he have some great tools. He's six foot seven, 230 pounds, basically a tight end that just plays at the wide receiver position. He has insane ball skills, a great vertical threat, red zone threat as well. Had about 900 yards and five touchdowns in 2022. So the talent's absolutely there. He was putting up some productive numbers, and he has just got a unique skill set. For the Texans, you've got Tank Dell, you've got John Mechie, you've got some smaller receivers. I think that Johnny Wilson just brings a new element to that offense, some real size to give to C.J. Stroud. For the New Orleans Saints, I am going to go with Emeka Abuga, the wide receiver out of Ohio State. Could have paired him with C.J. Stroud, but I do think that Wilson was a fun fit for the Texans there. For the Saints, Abuga, you know, they tend to really like Ohio State wide receivers. Michael Thomas, Chris Olave, and now Amika Abuga as well. Michael Thomas, I just don't think, is a long-term option for this team at this point. And behind Olave, there's just not a whole lot else. So I think getting another wide receiver for Derek Carr, whoever the quarterback is going into this next season, it's going to be a very helpful for him. So I think that you know drafting a wide receiver from Ohio State makes a lot of sense for the Saints. And you know overall, the talent, that fits that draft selection as well. So... I like that pick for the Saints at number 20. Moving on to number 21, we have the Dolphins on the clock. Kingsley Swamataya, the offensive tackle out of BYU, 6'6", 315 pounds, went to Oregon, originally transferred to BYU before the 2022 season, and had a very, very good year. For the Dolphins, Austin Jackson really hasn't been great. Teron Armstead just hasn't been consistently healthy, has dealt with injuries his entire career. And so getting a nice, talented f- former five-star offensive tackle makes a lot of sense for the Dolphins. And I think overall, I think that would be a very good pick for them. For the Ravens up next, I'm going to go with Cooper DeGene, the corner from Iowa. He is kind of fits the mold of what they tend to like in that cornerback position. He's six foot one, 209 pounds, so a little bit bigger. He's physical, has ball skills as well, had five interceptions in 2022, had a lot of pick sixes as well over the course of his career. So very productive, willing to tackle, very physical as well. So just makes a lot of sense for what the Ravens need. Marlon Humphrey's a great corner, but you need to get him a compliment. And I think Cooper DeGene could absolutely be that. For the Chargers up next, I'm going to go with Kalen Bullock, the safety from USC. They need a new safety after Nasir Adderley kind of unexpectedly retired. You know, Derwin James needs a running mate, and I think that Kalen Bullock could absolutely be that player. He's six foot three, 180 pounds, had five interceptions in 2022, so he showed that he can be a ball hawking type of player. I think he fits exactly what the Chargers need on that back end of the defense, and I definitely think he could be the first safety off the board in this draft. Has a lot of talent, and so I have him going number 23 to the Chargers there. 
at number 24 for the Dallas Cowboys. I think they could add to that corner room. I am going to go with Denzel Burke, the corner from Ohio State. Started as a true freshman, obviously, you know, a lot of competition at Ohio State at that corner spot, but Burke has been a consistent playmaker for the past two years, going into his third year. Doesn't necessarily have a ton of ball production, had zero interceptions in 2022, but overall, I definitely think he has been a very strong player. If he can get a couple of picks, definitely think he could find himself in the first round of the 2024 draft. For the Packers up next, at number 25, this would be the Jets pick that's coming from the Aaron Rodgers trade, assuming he plays that certain amount of steps required. I'm going to have them going with Kalen King, the corner from Penn State. A lot of teams targeted Kalen King because they had Joey Porter Jr. to go up against on the other side of the field this past year. You know, because of that, King had 16 pass deflection, had three interceptions as well. He's a very good athlete, and I think that the Packers could use a running mate for Jair Alexander. I like that pick a lot, and you know, Penn State tends to churn out really good athletes. Athletes King is no exception to that, and I definitely think he will be a good player in the NFL. For the Lions up next, I do think they could add a wide receiver. Both these Texas guys still on the board. I'm going to go with Adonai Mitchell, the wide receiver from Texas. He was a transfer from Georgia, did miss nine games in 2022 due to injury, but I think with him, he just kind of projects a little bit more as a traditional X receiver. He's six foot four. He is 195 pounds, so he's a little bit light, but overall, I think he has a lot of the traits that you really look for. Adonai Mitchell you know, I definitely think is going to be a big, big weapon for Quinn Ewers in this Texas offense in 2023. And I definitely think he is going to be a player to watch for this draft. For the Jaguars up next, they could add to the def defensive interior. I think Leonard Taylor is a good player, former five-star prospect. You know, he can be disruptive. Six foot three, 305 pounds, had three sacks in 2022. Good run stuffer as well. So I think overall, you know, you've got Trayvon Walker, you've got Josh Allen. Go ahead, get yourself a dominant interior player, really make that defensive line a strength of the team, and Leonard Taylor could potentially be that kind of player for him. For the Buffalo Bills up next, I'm going to go with Leatu Latu, the edge rusher from UCLA. He was a transfer originally from Washington, didn't really play a whole lot, transferred to UCLA, and put up great numbers in 2022, had 10 and a half sacks in kind of a rotational role at UCLA, so I'm excited to see what he can do really as a full-time starter with a draft spotlight on him. I definitely think he has the chance to really rise up draft board. So I think for the Bills, you know, Greg Rousseau is a good player. Boogie Basham hasn't done a whole lot for you. Von Miller is obviously coming off the injury and a bit older. So maybe Latu could provide some just path rushing upside and really kind of be a specialist for them in that regard. For the Eagles, I do think they could also go with an edge rusher as Brandon Graham is getting a little bit older. Additionally, Sweat is on a contract year. So I do think that Jack Sawyer could be a really interesting pick for him. You know, a former five-star prospect prospect, really, really talented player, hasn't really kind of turned it fully on at Ohio State, but I think the, he has a great chance to do so this year with that fantastic line around him. I definitely think that more one-on-one -on -one opportunities, he could be a great, great player for him this year, four and a half sacks in 2022, and I definitely think that with a good season, he could sneak into the first round as well. For the 49ers, I think edge rusher is also a good possibility. I'm going to go with Chop Robinson out of Penn State. Chop Robinson was a transfer from Maryland, had five and a half sacks. Really like a lot of the traits that he brings. Once again, Penn State just churns out good athletes, and I think Chop Robinson it will absolutely be that. For the 49ers, you know, you've got Nick Bosa, but I do think they could add a complimentary rusher to him on the outside, and Chop Robinson could be a very interesting player for him there. For the Bengals up next, I do think they could look at tight end Jatavian Sanders, another Texas Longhorn. Sanders was a athlete coming out of high school. You know, he's 6'4", 241 pounds, had 630 13 yards and five touchdowns at that position last year. I think he has a nice connection with Quinn Ewers. His teammates seem to speak very highly of him as well. So I do think that Jatavian Sanders makes a lot of sense for the Bengals. You've got Irv Smith on the one-year deal, but nothing really in the long-term plans at that position. Sanders could make a lot of sense. Then for the Kansas City Chiefs, I am going to go back to the Texas Longhorn well here and take Xavier Worthy. He is a bit smaller. He's six foot one, 164 pounds. You know, that's unlikely to make him a true ex receiver, but had 790 yards and nine touchdowns in 2022. Definitely think that he is a great player. And I think Texas 
you know, is has a great chance to be a very, very good team this upcoming year. That's going to do it for our 2024 NFL way too early mock draft. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know who you're excited to watch this upcoming season. If you like NFL and NFL draft content just like this, please hit that subscribe button down below. Just trying to grow this community to 1,000 subscribers by the beginning of the 2023 football season and would truly appreciate your support. While you are down there, please hit that like button as well. Just a free and easy way to support my channel. Really push this out to other draft fans just like you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll catch you in the next one.